Hi, Gary Chillingworth here for Air Gunner Magazine, Shooting in Country TV. Welcome to Life at the Range. Well, today we have a really requested uh, video, how to shoot in the wind. Well, it's simple, practice. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video and um, we'll see you again next time. Ta-da! Yeah, hi Emily. What, I, I can't just say, look, more practice, but, but that's the best way to, to learn to shoot in the wind. Well, yeah, I know, I, I understand that, but practice and practice and practice is the way you get better at shooting in the wind. Okay, so if I don't do it, you're going to, um, okay, well, okay, and you're going to insert what into where? Well, th that won't really hurt. Sideways. Um, okay, all right, I'll think up with some things to do. Uh, don't worry, we're going to do some more stuff on shooting in the wind. Uh, okay, right, please. Oh, can I have my dog back? Um, okay, no worries, bye. Okay, so let's think of some things to help you shoot in the wind. Welcome to Life at the Range. Okay, so before we get into uh, doing some shooting in the wind and, and going through the tips and tricks, a huge thank to everyone on our Facebook page who's been giving advice and have been really getting involved and, and helping uh, everyone. So if you're not, you know, if you're not part of our Facebook group, come and join us at Life at the Range. Please, as ever, like, share, and subscribe. Really is appreciated, and and get involved with the group. Okay, now what we're going to look at today is tips and tricks for shooting in the wind. Now, one of the biggest things you will need to do is learn your rifle. Now, some rifles have a right hand twist, some have a left hand twist, some are spring guns, some are PCP. Now, I know for a fact, my PCP takes a lot less wind than my Steyr used to. Okay, idiot alert. Um, I'm just editing the video and realised I made a mistake. It's obviously I can't talk today. Um, yeah, um, the mistake I made was saying that my PCP takes less wind than my Steyr. I should have said my Springer takes less wind than my Steyr. That's because of the way a spring works. The spring expands, it delivers all of its energy at once, and that expands the pellet in the barrel, uh, which grips the barrel instantly and it creates a large spin, spin rate, or that's what I've been told. But um, this is a, something we're going to have to do more often, so it's going to be idiot alert when I cock up on the uh, on the video and I, I have to put in a little bit extra just to explain what I'm talking about. So springers take less wind than PCPs. Springers are better. Basically, I love springers. So there we go. Hope that helps. Bye. I used to have a Daystate Mark III, fantastic rifle, and I knew for a fact that when the wind was blowing left to right, it took more wind than when it blew right to left. Now, I spoke to one chap once who told me it's to do with the Magnus effect, the way that pellets spin and it's either cutting into the wind or being pushed by the wind. Um, again, I don't know if this is true, but a lot of rifles will take more wind going left to right or from right to left. So when you are practicing, you need to learn your gun. If See if you can get access to a range. Set two targets up, one in front of you, one behind you. You sit in the middle as long as it's safe to do so. As far as you can, 30, 40 yards. Draw a line down the centre of the paper, five shots that way, five shots that way. And if the wind is always coming from the left, it's either pushing or it's cutting into it. You can then look at where the pellets are striking. If they're all hitting on the line or they're all hitting half inch outside, you know your gun takes equal, equal wind from both directions. If one is being blown further, then you've got your answer. Now, you can't just do this with five shots. You're going to have to spend a good half hour there, just go blasting away left and right, left and right, and that will give you the information you need. Moving forward, we are going to do a video, PCP versus spring gun, the ultimate smackdown. Um, we're going to get Simon Vant to come along and give us a hand with that. So what we'll do is we'll add a bit of wind information and testing in with that as well. 
Now, the other thing that I've been asked to do, and I just want to check to make sure that you guys would like it, is do you want a 2.2 versus 177? Also, heavy or light pellets, or say JSP 844s, um, uh, Air Arms, uh, Jumbos versus Express. Do they take more wind? Well, again, we're going to do a pellet video, but as a general rule of thumb, I use an 844 JSB, and I know that's got a set amount of wind. If you use a light pellet, the argument is that it will get there faster, and as such, it won't have as much effect. The wind won't have as much effect on the pellet as it's traveling through the air because it's getting there quicker. But then again, it's lighter. The same with a heavy pellet. Will that take my wind? It's, it's, it's traveling slower, so there's more time for wind to affect it, but it's got more mass. Now, I know a lot of FT shooters like the super light, super fast pellets, and they say they don't take as much wind. In my testing in the past, I found that I think I was using Ely Wasps, and they were getting blown about all over the place. To me, they were horrendous. Same with the old Defiance, if you remember those. Um, a friend of mine used to shoot, uh, oh, I think they were about 10.4 grain 177s, said they took no wind. Again, in my test, I found them to be actually to be the same as, as an 844. So this is one of these things we will look at in a, in a pellet video. The other thing is, beware of things that you see people say, like, oh, I've got a certain gun and it takes no wind. No such thing. Um, it might affect spin rates. It might take slightly less wind. Some guns take slightly more. But if you've got an efficient barrel, an efficient pellet, and you're traveling at a decent speed, basically, once that pellet leaves the barrel, as long as it's flying straight, it doesn't matter what gun it's come from. It's now in the air and it's moving. So beware of things you read and see on videos and, and stuff like that um i did used to have a bsa gold star and i must admit that was quite efficient in the wind um but i think it had a very very efficient barrel and my pellets matched it lovely so there was no wobble so it had good ballistic coefficient down range and that is the thing you want that pellet to be traveling as quickly as possible and not tumbling because the minute it starts to tumble it's creating a bigger air surface area for the wind to catch hold of. So know your gun, get out and practice, but now let's go on to a few tips and tricks. Now again, <laughs> practice is so important and not just before a competition. If you rock up on the day at say Maldon District, you've got the plinking range there. Get out there, Set yourself out a, a target or use one of the targets for 40 yards. Mark your line or you know, pick a pellet mark and see how far that pellet is moving. Because now you know that when you're out on the course, you're getting three quarters of an inch of wind at 40 yards. That could be invaluable. Now, it's really important to remember that the longer the pellet is in the air, the more time the wind has got to affect it. So what we're going to do is we've got three targets set out here. We've got one at 10 yards, we've got one at 25 yards, and then we've got one at 40 yards. Now, we're not going to shoot at the kill zone. We're going to shoot directly below the kill zone. We've got a right to left wind. And what we're going to do is we're going to aim just below the kill, and we're going to see how it affects. So... Let's have a look. First one, 10 yards. And there we go, directly below. Oh, by the way, for the more observant among you, you may have noticed my shirt has changed. Once again, we had a recording problem. Um, I did actually record it. I got sound this time, but my microphone had dropped down inside my shirt. So I'm having to record this the day after. Oh, I'm having so much trouble with microphones. Okay, so 25 yards. <laughs> I 
Well, to me, that looked directly underneath, but maybe fractionally to the right. And now we're going to fire out at 40 yards. And this is the one I'm expecting to move. So let's have a look. And there we go. The pellet got blown out to the right-hand side. Now, this range is slightly sheltered out to about 25 yards, but this is moving left to right, so this won't actually affect it. Um, we've got a large field out to the left-hand side where the wind picks up and it, and it comes across. Um, so be aware. Now, another couple of things you need to be aware of is, at the moment, we've got this wind which is coming straight from the left. But if the wind was coming directly at us, it's going to slow the pellet down, which will push the pellet down. Well, sorry, it will reduce the speed, so the pellet will hit lower. If the wind is coming directly behind us from the right, sorry, if the wind is coming directly from behind, it's going to speed the pellet up. It's, you know, it's, it's like the Lord Almighty giving it a little flick, and that will, that will speed it up, and the pellet will hit high. But when it gets... To be really interesting is when the wind is coming in at an angle either towards um, from the right or from the left or from behind from right and to the left not directly across or behind or front so what we'll do is we'll go inside to the whiteboard of knowledge and we will have just a, a little uh, drawing and we'll show you what to do when you get a quartering wind um, but that's predominantly shooting pellets at different ranges Okay, so quiet. We sneaked into the conservatory to do a quick white board of knowledge. I'm actually banned from doing any gun stuff in here now since the HW98 incident. Um, if you haven't seen that, go and look at my HW98 strip down video and you'll see a part of the gun fly and nearly go through the window. Right, so you're on a peg and you are, there's your firing line and there is your peg there and you are shooting in that direction at the target. And as we said, if the wind is coming from behind you, it will speed the pellet up and the pellet will hit high. If the wind is coming against you, it's going to slow the pellet down so the pellet will hit low. But the question is, what happens if the wind is coming in this direction? Well, there's your pellet. It's a big pellet. And obviously the wind is going to be pushing on this side and just imagine that the wind is going in that direction. There is your pellet, so the pellet will want to follow the path of the wind. So it will push it to the left-hand side of the target. The same is if the wind is coming in that direction. It's going through the pellet. It's pushing on the right-hand side of the pellet, and it will want to push it to the right-hand side of the kill. Now, it gets a bit more complicated when... Let's just turn this over. I dread to think what's on the next page. Just talk about yourselves. I'm trying to remember what that was for. Okay, so again, here's your firing line. Here's your peg. Here's your target. And now the wind is coming in that direction. So you're firing there. There is your pellet. So the wind is going to hit there. And again, it's going to want to push the pellet this way so it will come out on the right-hand side. But now you've got to remember that the wind is slowing the pellet down, whereas before it was speeding up. So not only is it going to hit right, it's also going to hit low. Again, if the wind is coming in this direction, it's going to slow the pellet down and it's going to push it out to the left-hand side of the kill zone. Sorry, I should have written that there. So, so this one will hit to the right and this one will hit to the left because it's pushing it away. It's known as a quartering wind. Now, obviously, a quartering wind is not going to be as violent as a straight one coming from the right or coming from the left. So you have to take that into, into account. Now, at the start of the video, uh, I did this whole thing about practice, practice, practice. And this is the advantage of being a member of a club because you can walk up to a firing line and you can say, OK, the wind is coming directly from the right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a target out on an angle. 
So I can replicate a quartering wind. So that will actually help you practice. So you can even have a slew of targets around and you can move your body about and shoot. So you're getting the wind to come from all different directions and to see how it affects you and your gun. So here's the whiteboard of knowledge again, stolen from Brandon Herrera, the AK guy. Go check out his videos. And, and, and that's a quartering wind. Um, I hope that makes sense. Okay, so the other thing to also remember is if that is your firing line and this is your peg, the target isn't always going to be directly in front of you. Sometimes the target is going to be over here or over here. So you're aiming and you're shooting in that direction. And again, the wind is now blowing down that way. So again, if this is your pellet, again, the wind is wanting to push it in that direction. So it's going to hit on the left hand side of the target. If the wind is blowing in this direction, it's hitting this side of the target. So it's pushing it that way. So it's going to hit on the right hand side of the target. So again, be aware of just because you've been shooting, there's your target, that's peg one, you're shooting that way and the wind hasn't affected it. Your next target is over there. The wind is still going that way. It's affecting this side of the target. So this side of the pellet. And if that is your target, it's going to hit on the right hand side. So always think about where the wind is coming from. And if you just get confused, just imagine wind is coming from there. Draw a line. Imagine your pellets going through it. Think about on what side the pellet is going to hit. And it's always going to want to push it in that direction. So if that is your line of sight, the wind is coming directly through there. It's wanting to push it that way. Then the pellet is going to go off in that direction. I, I'm not trying to teach you to suck eggs, but it's something that we all need to understand how the wind affects pellets because they do create a lot of missed targets or the wind does create a lot of missed targets. Um, there you go. And at least we didn't break the conservatory, but I better go now. I think my wife's coming. Don't tell her. Another thing that a lot of users use are wind indicators. And these are pieces of kit that essentially a piece of string or a piece of wool or a feather that you attach to the front of your rifle on an on a arm that moves out. We'll put up a picture now. And what these wind indicators do is they give you a rough indication of what the wind is doing at the peg. Now, the other thing to remember is it's great if you know what the wind is doing at the peg. But if we look at the range here, the range is covered, 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 covered. And as we move backwards, we now come up into a more open section. And often we get really, really sheltered area just down here. So that's my fire pit. Really sheltered area here. But when we come out into the open bit, the wind picks up more. So to give you an example, I don't know if this will work, but here's a little bit of, of leaf. As you can see, it's barely moving. So we're going to move forward, move forward, move forward. And there you go. Look at that. Literally, the very second we moved past this area here, the wind is coming from the fields over there through this bit of brush. And the wind picks up. So windicators are great. They will show you what is happening at your at the peg but they will not tell you what's happening downrange. So use them, trust them, well, uh, use them as a guide, but don't, they're not the be all and end all. What you want to do is look and see what the wind is doing at the target. Okay, so here we are, and we're looking at a bit of foliage. Now, as you can probably hear, there's quite a lot of wind out today. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the mic. Wind a bit better. Hopefully you can hear that. Okay, plug the mic back in so that we can cut out a bit of that wind noise. Now, do you see this piece of foliage in front of us? And it seems to be equally moving 
towards us. It's going left, it's going right, and it's swinging in quite a uniform matter. And that is because if we pick up some ivy, we'll drop this here. You see that the wind is coming directly at us. So that means that this particular branch is being moved left and right as the wind is catching the fronds and it's coming at us. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move over to another part of the range where hopefully the wind will be. Here we have a bramble and as you can see the wind is blowing it constantly to the right. You see these leaves up here, see that this leaf here is being pushed constantly and if you are looking at it in your scope you will see that that leaf is constantly being pushed from left to right and as the wind goes into its cycle and it dulls slightly it rotates back to its natural line but what we can never see is the wind being blown in that direction it is a constant left to right unlike the conifer we had before so this is telling me by watching that particular leaf that I have got a fairly strong left to right wind. What you'll see a lot of people do on an HFT course is they'll walk up and they'll grab a handful of leaves and they'll throw them up in the air and the wind will blow them away. It's a really good way of, of learning the wind um, or seeing what the wind is doing at the peg. But remember that the wind here is not always the same as what it is 45 yards away. Also, one of the disadvantages of grabbing a huge, great big pile of leaves is there's quite a lot of mass there. So some of the leaves could be on top of each other, pushing it down. Obviously, if the leaves are wet, you're going to get a, a different... Uh, a different response as if the leaves were dry. What I like to do is come up and pick up and try and find a uniform leaf. Something fairly dry. I have known of shooters that actually have a pocket full of leaves which they bring from home and they use those. Hi, Gary here editing again. Um, something just occurred to me as I was watching the video. As you saw, I picked up the leaf and I dropped it directly in front of me with the wind coming behind and the leaf dropped straight down. Well, I'm a fairly corpulent individual, so my body was blocking the wind. So if you are going to use a leaf to check the wind, make sure that you drop it to your side. Because if your body is blocking the wind coming directly from behind you, you're going to get a false reading. Um, it's not anything I've ever thought about doing, but I just realised it watching the video, so I thought I'd mention. Right, back to the video. I'll um, I'll put that bit in again so that you can see what I'm doing. Cheers. And they use those as a guide. Now, some shooters in the past have brought little bits of tissue, which they rip off, and it gives them a good guide, but a lot of clubs don't like you throwing toilet paper all over their course, so it is banned. Some places, like uh, uh, over in Holland and things like that, you are not actually allowed to use stuff you bring with you as a wind gauge. Now, also, what a lot of people currently are using is they love the old cigarettes or the vapes. <sighs> And they get a big gust going to the left, which is really nice when you're on a peg and you're about to shoot and it's like being at the Battle of the Somme. You get this big cloud of, of, uh, of vape coming across you and you, all of a sudden you can no longer see the target. That's why now if you want to vape, you have to do it at least six feet back from the firing line. So leaves, uniform leaves you will give you a really good guide of what is happening here at the peg. Don't use bits of paper. Some people have known to use little bits of wool, which they, you know, uh, certainly the Welsh guys like to do that. Um, use whatever you can that is around you. Um, you know, before the comp, pick up a load of leaves, stick them in your pocket, not the one with your pellets in, and, and, and that will certainly help. So use what you can. Now, the other thing to use is the target string. 
Now we're going to use our microphone <laughs> lead here. And what people will do is they will pick up the string if it isn't bolted to the ground, which a lot of shooters like doing. And the great thing about the string is most people use a, a length of builder's line, which they get from um, B&Q or from tool station or something like that. And it's worth going to get some yourself if you've got a long garden, because you can practice. Hold the line and you will often see the wind blowing it and it will be bowing it to the left or to the right. Some people like to hold it, flick it up in the air, and then see the way that it pushes. Now, some clubs like to tie lots of knots in their string to add extra weight. And if the string is heavier, it's not going to be affected as the wind as much. If it's a rainy day and the string is wet, it won't be affected by the, the, uh, by the wind as much. If it's frozen overnight, the string won't be affected by the wind as much. So use the string. It certainly works, but just be aware of what it is. So hold it. You can either pull it tight and drop it. Hold it up with a certain amount of bow in it and just watch the way that the wind will blow it. And that's how you string, but don't use it as the only thing to gauge your distance. Now, here we are in the garden, and as you can see, the top of the trees is blowing, a, blowing an absolute hooli. It's probably a good 15, 20 mile an hour wind. But the fact is, just because the wind is blowing high in the air, does that mean that it's blowing the same along the ground? Now, so be aware that if you're in deep, dark woodlands and you're shooting down low, there's a good chance the wind is not going to move anywhere as much as it is up in the up in the air. So you're standing there and you'll see the top of the trees and they're blowing left and right and it's absolutely crazy. But down at the ground, is it moving as much? So when you're throwing your leaves up in the air, throw them up high, but also just drop a few low. Look at the grass, look at the, the branches down low when you're laying down at your peg. Is the, you know, is the wind moving along the ground the same as it is up in the air? It's always really worth checking that. Owen Wilson, my spring gun nemesis, also came up with another really good point. Watch out for valleys and walls and, and things that could rebound the wind. I remember shooting, uh, I think it was at Quarry years ago, and you could see that the wind was blowing from the right-hand side. I mean, it, it was blowing really strong, but yet all the misses on the target were on the right. So you're sitting there thinking, what, are people giving like a massive amount of wind to the right? No, they weren't. What they were doing is they were giving it right outside right edge, correctly so. But the wind was hitting the wall that was to the left-hand side of the target, and it was rebounding and blowing the pellets back. Now, this is a trick that a lot of cool setters use. So be aware that if a wind is coming over the top of a brow, it could very well push the pellets down. If there is a wall right next to the target, the wind could be hitting the wall and rebounding. So again, this is the thing. Set your targets out when you're practicing next to walls, next to trees. Place your stuff when you're practicing to actually try and get the wind to do funny things with your pellets. And that's another great point. Practice on windy days. Sorry, my arm's getting tired. Um, practice on windy days. Don't just say, oh, you know, Malden District, there's no wind today, so I'm going to go and practice. No, find those days where there's a 10 or 15 mile an hour wind. Get out there, put your targets out, you know, as long as you can do safely, and, and learn what your gun does. You know, practicing the wind is so important, and I really must do more of it. Now, another really important thing is look at your targets. You've turned up on your course and the people in front of you have shot and you've now moved onto your target. And you can see here, this 25 mil, you've got impacts, a good kill zone outside to your right hand side. Now, this is the other thing. Spend a bit of time looking at who, oh, Spitfire Target, flopover.co.uk. Um, spend a bit of time looking around you at the people you've got shooting in front of you. Now, without being horrible, there are certain people that 
you know they're just going to shoot right at the target. They're not going to give wind. They're out there having a great day. They're enjoying themselves. They're not experienced enough, and they will just shoot at the target. So if you've got that person in front of you, they aim at a 25 mil kill at 40 yards, you've got the wind blowing from left to right, and they flop it over, you know there's a good chance that they've not given a lot of wind. Know the people you shoot around you. You can use that to help guide you. But what you can see here is the people in front of you, they've probably aimed right at it, and they've moved a good 20, 25 mil. So you know that you want to be aiming just out here. Now, Jenny Stone come up with a brilliant comment. She said, there's never no wind. You're right. There are very few times where there is never any effect on the pellet. So if you've got wind left to right, but there's not a left lot there, just aim slightly left to center. Always assume that the pellet will move a bit. So if you can get any kind of advantage by reading even the smallest amount of wind, take it. But, but read your plate. This is clearly the wind is blowing from, from left to right and it's pushing the pellets out to the right. So read your face plates. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video and that you've learned something from it. I must admit, I've got really bad at shooting in the wind recently and, and all the guidance that you guys have put down on our Facebook page has, has helped me and I'm hoping I'll shoot better in the wind. There was one bit of, uh, bit of advice from Leo Keith, a uh, picture here, who said there is no wind. Well, I've shot behind you, Lee, the day after you had a curry and unfortunately, yes, there was wind, but we won't go into that. As ever, thanks so much for joining us here today. Look after each other, take care of yourselves, and be excellent to one another. We'll see you again very, very soon. Ta-da!